Hi, I'm Casey St. Ange. I worked at The Late Show with David Letterman from 1993, the start of the CBS show, to 1996. And here are some of my favorite moments from my time there. There was a time when Harrison Ford was coming on the show to promote his new movie, Sabrina, which, spoiler alert, it's about Harrison Ford and Greg Kinnear. They're in competition for the affections of a young woman. And so one of the writers had written a cold open to go at the beginning of the show where Dave and Harrison Ford were trying to figure out if they were in competition for a young woman who would she pick? And so I was cast as the young woman. Oh, you know, Harrison, I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate you being on the show. I'm, I'm very, very excited to have you with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here, Dave. Now, you know, um, you know the movie, Sabrina, yeah. uh, the plot is about uh, two men, in this case happen to be brothers, who are interested in the same woman. Right. Yeah. And I'm just thinking to myself, it kind of a funny thing occurred to me. I, I wonder what would happen if you and I were kind of in that role competing for the same woman. I wonder what would happen. You know what I'm saying? Well, why don't we find out? All right, great. Why don't we ask them? Oh, why don't we ask your... One of my assistants, Casey. Casey. Hi. Casey. How are you? Good. Yeah. Go on, you ask her. All right, what, well, what do you think between Harrison and, and myself? Well, Dave is my boss. <laughs> right. But I have to say Harrison. That's Absolutely, funny. no doubt in my Harrison. mind. Harrison. Harrison. Yeah, but that's not fair because she knows me. There was an episode of the show where Lyle Lovett, Warren Beatty, and Gary Shandling were the guests. There was a huge standby line for the show that day, and so the writers had the idea that maybe it would be fun to have some people who were there on the standby line go up to Dave's office and watch the show from there. And so I got to be in that bit because I was greeting the kids from Buffalo that were sent up from the standby line. So then the idea built because every time someone was a guest on the show, when they were done, Dave also sent them up to his office. Mostly what I remember is Warren Beatty kept picking up grapes from this tray of snacks that we had. And he kept asking me like, how do I look doing this? Like eating grapes off the grape bunch? And I was like, you look like Warren Beatty eating grapes. Like, that's that's the thing that I would watch. Uh, this is Casey. Casey, Hi. this is this is uh, Nick and uh, uh, Kathy. They're from Buffalo. All right. So speak very slowly. Okay. <laughs> All right, take him in. Come on, take right, him in. On. Suddenly this thing is bogged oh, down you. unmercifully. Just take thank them in. They'll you, be Lonnie. watching the show. Thank, thank you very you. much, Lonnie. Thank you. That's Whoa. Lonnie, our receptionist. Look at that office, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Ooh, unbelievable. Yeah, look at, wow, crackers. <laughs> Are you kids comfy? Yes. Is the uh, is the show on the set? Let's see. Oh, there. Oh, look. There here, here I am. Hi, Dave. <laughs> They did that, didn't they? They waved right back to the screen. <laughs> and then the show was over, but then Gary and Warren hung out in Dave's office, and then Gary was like, you know it would be so funny if we hid in Dave's closet and surprised him when he came back. And I was like, would that be funny? <laughs> I feel like that would scare me if it was my office. I probably wouldn't love it. And I was very young, and I was like, Please, Gary Shandling, you're leading the charge on this. I'm begging you, please don't hide. He just kept being like, no, 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 it'll be funny. Trust me, trust me. I just went back and I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna act like I don't even care. And when I was like, okay, like if you want to, I mean, what, you know, whatever. And then as soon as I stopped being worked up about it, he, it was no longer fun. And then I realized Gary Shandling was just doing a bit to me. He was just trying to wind me up about how he was gonna hide in Dave's closet. And then he was like, no, 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 we'll go, okay. So this is one of my favorite stories. Another one of my jobs was to make sure that there was hot coffee for Dave, cause uh, this is, maybe you don't know, he was really drinking coffee all throughout the show. So I was bringing some air pots of coffee. I banged one of the pots and it was glass inside, so it shattered into a million pieces and hot coffee went everywhere, everywhere. And I said, oh my God, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid. And I didn't know that Charles Grodin was behind me. And he said, hey, you know what? There are gonna be a lot of people in this business that are gonna call you stupid. Don't be one of them. <laughs> then he helped me sort of pick up. 
<laughs> pick up the coffee pot and throw it away and uh you know and just went on his way to go be on the show uh leaving me a better person i don't yeah. get to see the show but whenever i come on the show sure. i do i do like to watch it uh the night before that i come on <laughs> So I hadn't I hadn't really seen the show for about really about four months and I wanted to so I taped it because I I'm sleeping there, but I did watch it this morning and I feel a little uh, awkward here because you you've gone in a, in a different direction since I was uh, <laughs> since I was last on and, and and this and they booked me on this show really about five six weeks ago and I at the time I just assumed it was like coming on with and you know we've been appearing to, you know for, I've been like for 10 11 years sure, or something. We'll go way I, did, back. I did not know that no. the show had changed its direction and I'm gonna try the best I can uh, no, no, to, no, to no. fit in no, with no, the new no. uh, direction that, uh, that we've gone in, so, uh, you know. Uh, they're, they're, they're absolutely, uh, they're just absolutely out of the laundry there. You don't have to, they're fine. You don't, you know, don't have to, they're just, you know, okay, let's see. What, I don't know. It's, uh, oh boy, look at that microphone. Boy, oh boy. Now that's exciting. That's an exciting, I, I'm, I'm awkward at this. I'm not that good at this. Boy, that's really an exciting macro. Get all of yourself. I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get off that. Knock it off. I'll get off that. All right, let me try it. So, I know I have, I have a, enjoy I have, these. I do so have an anecdote right uh, about, yeah. about someone who, uh, who relieved himself in the park. Stop I don't know if that's it. anything uh, for you at all. I don't know. Stop uh, it. All my life, I've been a giant fan of Prince. Prince was coming on The Late Show, and he had just changed his name to The Symbol. And I was like trying, and I did this a lot, trying to play it cool. Like I wasn't a big fan of his. And my main fear is that like if Dave caught on that I was a fan of someone that he would like maybe embarrass me in front of them. So Prince had agreed to do a cold open and I was like, I'm gonna try to play it cool, but I'm also gonna try to make sure that I'm there while they're shooting that cold open. I was just out of my mind to be in the same room with Prince and Dave spit water toward the camera. And then I was like, I should get out of here because like it's tight and also probably because I wanted to go outside of the green room so I could also see Prince walk by. Prince, a person who I had probably imagined a million times what I would say to him if I ever got a chance to say anything to him, walks out of the green room and then just points at the bottom of my pants and says, you got wet. And I just stared at the floor and said, I'm okay. So that was my one chance to talk to him. And I said, I'm okay. Artist formerly known as Prince. I'd like you to meet the artist currently known as Pinhead. One of my jobs when I worked at The Late Show was to help Dave with his correspondence. He's a super old fashioned guy, loves to send a letter, a thank you letter. There was a time when the talent department came to Dave and said, you know, we're reaching out to people that we think will be nominated for Oscars. We just feel like it would be really nice if you did some of your really nice letters asking people who haven't agreed yet if if they would please come on the show to talk about their oscar nominated films when it got to nicholas cage's letter i said to dave okay we have to do this nicholas cage letter what do you want to say and he was so like dave was so just wanted me out of his office at that point that he was like just tell him thanks for deciding not to be a and coming on the show and i'm not going to say the word it was a different time it started with a B and uh, you know, and he was joking, clearly. Dave was joking, it was between me and him. So I wrote a letter to Nicolas Cage that I felt was in the spirit of what Dave wanted to say, but just, you know, different, different wording. Keep in mind, this is a long time ago. This is, uh, keep in mind, this is also one of my deepest regrets. I brought in a stack of letters to Dave and he would always read them and sign some of them and some that he wasn't cool with, he would be like, oh, okay, you need to change this, 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 and this, and like cross it out with a red pen, send me back to redo the letter. I sent out all the letters that he signed. So a couple days later, he was like, oh, hey, shoot, we forgot to write that letter to Nicolas Cage. And I was like, no, I think we did write a letter to Nicolas Cage. And he was like, 
what? <laughs> and I was so proud of myself that it had like gotten out and I was like so on top of it. And I had written like, dear Nicholas, glad you decided to stop being such a woman and come on my show. And Dave was like, oh no. <laughs> he was like, you, you cannot have sent this to Nicholas Cage. This is offensive. I love that he was, had to tell me a young woman that it was offensive. And I was like, oh God. And he was like, listen, you, I, you gotta get that letter back. Like, I don't want Nicolas Cage to see it. It's kind of offensive. And I was just like, this is it. Like tomorrow's gonna be my last day here. So I remember I came in early and I was just sort of like tidying up my area, all the better to pack it up. When I went in and told Dave like, listen, I was not able to get that letter back, uh, that offensive letter that I mailed to Nicolas Cage. And so then the mailroom called up and they were like, hey, we have a big delivery for the boss. And I was like, oh, OK. Just coming out of the elevator was the biggest arrangement of roses I had ever seen in my life. And uh, I took the card and opened it and it was from Nicolas Cage saying, I'm also glad I decided to stop being such a woman and come on your show. And I was like, maybe I won't get fired, maybe. <laughs> and so put the flowers out for Dave to see, ha ha, so funny. And he was like, well, all right, you're lucky. <laughs> it's so many years later and I'm still mortified that I made that grievous error and Dave I'm sorry and Nicolas Cage if you're watching I am sorry I mean I guess technically that's the first bit I ever wrote for television but not intentionally so not great yeah first of all I mentioned at the top of our program that uh, I just I really admire you I think you're great in everything you do well, and, thank you. and you know what it is and I've said this to other people that I like in film I think your personality always comes through and that's what's so appealing about you on screen. Well, and I feel the same way about you. I've no, always, really? Well, no, no, really. I've always admired your, your interviews. They're hilarious. You're the best <laughs> yeah. in the business. Oh, and, yeah. and frankly, yeah. that's why I was terrified to come on for 12 no. years. I mean, you're the... You were you're terrified. The, you're the Tyrannosaurus Rex of TV. I mean, it's Dave's world yeah, uh -huh. and we're all living in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're just being silly. <laughs> but... Um, what do you have there? Well, it wasn't until it wasn't until you sent me this letter. Sent you a letter trying to get you to come on the well, show. I think was yeah. that what it was. Dear Nicholas, we're looking forward to your appearance. Stop being such a woman. Take care, <laughs> your friend Dave. <laughs> what, what is? What do you mean by this? Let's see. This it could be a forgery. Yeah, I'm sure that I didn't write that. I mean, but listen, I, I love women. In fact, I'd like to be a grandmother, like Juanita. Juanita, right over there.